Hi, my name's Mark and welcome to Kids Church Online. My name is Amani and I'm really excited to be doing Kids Church with you this morning. Let's get stuck into it. Now, Mark told me that over the past couple of weeks, you've been looking at the book of Ephesians. And in last week's passage, Paul said that we are to start living new lives as we place our trust in Jesus. Now, I think you got a really good example of that in Zacchaeus or Zach, the tax collector, a man who at one point stole and cheated from people. But after he met Jesus and after he placed his trust in Jesus, decided that he was going to live a new life. So instead of stealing and cheating like he used to, he decided to give back what he owed to those he had taken from. He was a really good example of someone who started to live a new life, wasn't he? Now, what we're going to see in our passage today are some really concrete ways that we can be living a new life, some things that we can be doing. And as I look at our passage today, I find it really helpful to have alongside me this set of traffic lights. Do these look familiar? When you're driving somewhere in the car, you might see these traffic lights ahead of you on the road. And if you see the red light glowing, it means that you need to stop. Exactly right. If you see the yellow line, uh, if you see the yellow light glowing, it means that you need to, no one really knows. If you see the green one glowing, it means that your car can go, right? Red light, stop, green light, go. And I find this really helpful for today's passage because there are a number of things that Paul says we need to red light, we need to stop doing. But there are also a number of things that Paul says green light that we should be doing that are great for us to do. So as we work through our passage today, let's see if we can work out what some of the red light things are and some of the green light things are. Let me start reading our passage for us. It's from Ephesians chapter 4 and we're going to start reading at verse 28 says anyone who has been stealing must never steal again. Instead, they must work. They must do something useful with their own hands. Then they will have something to give to people in need. Do you guys see the red light and the green light here? Paul says if anyone has been stealing, they must red light. Stop doing that. Don't take things that aren't yours. But instead, they must green light. Work. They must do something useful with their hands. It's kind of like what we saw last week with Zach, wasn't it? At one point, he used to steal and cheat from people, kind of red light, and he stopped doing that, green light. He was useful with his hands and he was able to give to other people. Let's keep on reading. Don't let any evil talk come out of your mouths. Say only what will help to build others up and meet their needs. Then what you say will help those who listen. Uh, Paul says, don't let any evil talk come out of your mouths. Red light, we see that one again. Green light, only say what is helpful and useful for building other people up. I'm going to show you here a picture of my sister and I when we were in primary school. Don't we look just so happy? (laughs) Um, When my sister and I were young, there were times where we would say things to each other that were hurtful, that were harmful. And Paul would say, don't do that. That is a red light thing to do. You shouldn't be doing that. Instead, green light. You should only be saying things that are helpful for building other people up. I wonder if there's people that are close to you, maybe some of your friends, maybe some people in your family, maybe your siblings, that you can think about building up with your words. Paul doesn't want us to say things that are harmful to others, but only things that are helpful. I wonder if there's some people that you can think of that you could be saying nice things to. Coming towards the end of our passage, it says, get rid of all hard feelings, anger and rage. Stop all fighting and lying. Don't have anything to do with that kind of hatred. Be kind and tender to one another. Forgive one another, just as God forgave you because of what Christ has done. Again, we see the red light and we see the green light. Get rid of hard feelings, anger and rage. Don't have anything to do with that kind of living. Instead, green light, 
Be kind and tender to one another. Forgive one another just as God forgave you. Now, I think it's really interesting right at the end of our passage that it says we should be really quick and keen to forgive other people because of what Christ has done for us, because of the forgiveness that we have received. When I was um, when I was in primary school, I remember accidentally breaking the window to my dad's office. I kicked a ball and it shattered the window. It crashed into it and broke the window. And I was really nervous because dad told me not to kick the ball near the house because you could break the window. And so I didn't know what dad was going to say. I didn't know what he was going to do. Was he going to be mad or angry with me? How was he going to react? Well, to my surprise, dad paid for the window himself and offered me forgiveness. He paid for the window himself and offered me forgiveness. I was completely blown away. Now, imagine if later that afternoon, my sister had accidentally broken something of mine and I turned around and was furious and angry at her. That wouldn't really make much sense, would it? Considering the forgiveness that my dad had shown me, it wouldn't make sense if I were to just turn around and be angry and mad at my sister, but kind of like the way that my dad was kind and was uh, and for, forgave me, it would make sense for me to do the exact same thing to my sister. That's what Paul is saying right at the end of this passage, that remember the kindness and the forgiveness that God has shown you in Jesus and be quick to go and do the same. Right? That is a big green light thing for us to do. Go and show forgiveness to other people because of the forgiveness that God has shown us. So I hope the next time you're walking down the street or the next time you're driving in a car somewhere, when you see a set of traffic lights, you remember some of the things that we shouldn't be doing, but instead the new life that we should be living, some of the green light things that we can be doing as we live a new life. i
should I do? Ben Nicholson is a British artist. He loves to use flat colors, geometric shapes in his paintings of abstract compositions, landscape, and still life. I don't know about you, but I love growth. As a plant lover, nothing's more exciting than seeing the formation of that new baby leaf. If you have done gardening with your parents before, you will know that plants need soil, sun, and water to grow. Although you can control the types of soil and the amount of water uh, for your plant, you can't control all the elements for uh, your plant to grow. For example, you can't even guarantee that tomorrow will be a sunny day. Now, imagine if you are a plant. When you receive good grades at school and when you receive great compliments from your family and friends, do you give glory to yourself or do you give all the glory to Jesus? Because ultimately, he is one who is in control. Inspired by Ben Nicholson's use of textures and simple shapes, today we are going to use recycled cardboard in our artwork. For this activity, you will need a piece of paper, acrylic paint, some cardboard from your recycled bin, a pair of scissors and some paper glue. To articulate growth, I'm going to simply create a pot of flowers on my canvas. First of all, I'm going to cut out a pot. Then I'm going to paint it with some white acrylic paint and set it aside for it to dry. Next, we need to create some flowers and leaves. Cut out any shapes that you like and then paint them. After you've finished painting and drawing your shapes, it is time to put them together. Arrange them until you are happy with the position of each shape. Remember, art making is supposed to be a slow process, so don't rush it. Use some glue to secure these shapes, add some details, and then sign your name. Thank you for watching this episode of Art Making with Mei Mei. Thanks for joining us for Kids Church Online today. I hope you've learned some great things about our great God. Make sure you download all the family resources so you can keep learning together. We'll see you again next week for Kids Church Online. Bye.